Hi, my name is Mike, and every day I code. Today, I'm creating a landlord application for the multi-tenant app that we started last week. To do this, I'm going to use this package called Filament. Filament is an admin panel package that comes with a table builder and a form builder. So I think that it's going to work out really well for this project. Let's take a look at what we're building. So as you recall, we started a multi-tenancy app that consists of two applications. The tenant app is the application that manages all of the internal business processes so for the tenant. So you, you could think if the tenant has a specific function such as sell a product or generate a report, then that all exists here. But how do we create new tenants for our app? That's done through a landlord app. It's essentially the manager. The manager can create new tenants, edit tenants, run tenant related reports, uh, etc. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So from Filament, I'm going to click on the documentation and we're going to add Filament to our project. Next, we'll create a user. All right, so now we have our landlord application and we have our first tenant, excuse me, our first manager. So let's see what happens. Awesome. Now let's try logging in. Okay, so we have filament up and running pretty bare bones right now. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is, is create some sort of a manager for our tenants. Uh, so let's go back to the documentation and let's see what else we could do here. I'll just publish this. Might need this later. Okay. So in order to create a, a tenant manager, we're going to use a filament resource. A filament resource is basically the live wire logic controller and views to manage the, um, the specific model uh, information. So in this case, we will create a resource and we will set it to tenant. Okay. The tenant resource has been created. Going back to our dashboard, here it is. All right. So it looks like we have one tenant so far. If I open up the database, we do. We've got one tenant. We can see that this tenant is identified by an ID. We have a created at and an updated at and a key value pair of data. So let's see how we can add this to our, um, our tenant resource. So I guess before we look over here, um, let's go ahead and just jump back to our application. So um, when we ran the last command to make the resource, we should see now this filament folder, a list of all of our resources and the resource that we just made. So this, this controller here, uh, outlines what we would see on the index view. So this would be the table and what we would see on the form view. So this would be the create, edit, etc. Down here, we can see the pages and the routes that will be used for this resource. So when you click on the resource itself, that will refer to the index view. If you create a new resource, it will take us to the create view. And of course, the edit will take us to the edit view. So looking at our data model, we see that we need an ID, we've got our timestamps and our data. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might represent that in Filament. I think for the ID, we'll just use a text box. So I'll just grab this right here and we will throw it in here. 
Actually, this one's going to be a little bit different because we want the form first. This is called ID. We can get rid of these here. And let's take a look at the table. So if I jump over to the admin panel, So we will use a text column called ID. Okay, so how does this look? There you go, not too bad. Let's go ahead and show us the uh, date and timestamps here. We have let's take a look. Okay. So perhaps we just use a text column and we just uh, inc incorporate our date here. If I search for date, yeah, this works. So back to our a resource, not too bad. Looks like I got a typo here. Cool. So editing this, let's get the same columns pushed over here. Actually, in this case, the created at and the updated at should be um, read only, right? So we won't worry about that. And um, let's see. So there's two things that happened when we created our tenant last time. So jumping over to the tenancy for Laravel. Creating a tenant consisted of two parts. So the first part was to create the tenant. The second part was to create the domain. So let's go ahead and see if we can create the tenant just based off of what we have here. So, so let's go ahead and try creating a new tenant. Great. So our new tenant has been created. We can say here in our database, we have our new tenant here. So now that we've successfully created our interface to add our tenants, let's go ahead and create an action so that we can associate domains with that tenant. So, so Let's create a button now where we can associate a domain with each one of these tenants. To do that, we're gonna use a button action. The button action is gonna go on the table in the tenant resource, and we'll add it to an actions method. So I'll quickly just take this and we'll stub it in here. And then let's just update this for our purposes. So this is the Ray package that will just allow us to see the output. So I expect whatever our modal passes will pop out here. And now let's just set up our form. So this is gonna be a text input and we will call it domain, call domain. And then there's this URL type, but I don't think that applies to us because we don't want to include the HTTP or anything else. Okay, so let's see how this looks. All right, so if my domain is foo.com, 
there we go we can see that foo.com pops out in our debug so now what we'll do is we will add that domain um, using what we have here on the Tennessee uh, within the docs so in order for us to pass um, the original record we do need to add that here so I'm going to do that by specifying the class type and then we'll put record I'll update this to record and then this will be the domain Okay, so this should be just about it. Let's give it a shot. I've refreshed this page. I have refreshed this view. So let's see if we can add foo.com. All right, we've got foo.com. Maybe foo.test. Okay, foo.test. So if I go to foo.test, I should see something now. There we go. And of course, foo.com would go to the real internet. So we'll just leave it here. Looks pretty good. Um, the other thing that might be helpful is if we could manage the domains. And to do that, we'd create some sort of a relationship. Um, if I take a look. Okay. So back here, let's create the relationship. So it has many. So we'll make this say domain resource, or actually, excuse me, tenant resource. Okay, so here's our relationships. And relationships, domains. Okay, it's good. Our title is domain. Okay, so now under get relations here. We'll go ahead and we will add our domains relation manager. I think we just add the class. But then form, form, form. Okay, let's take a look. So we've got our three domains. We'll give it a column. Mama said what? Mama did this oh, okay. So that's just about it. Just as a recap, today we created a filament admin. We also added a tenant resource. On the tenant resource, we created a action which produces a modal window. Saving the uh, the form here creates a domain, and then we can view all of the domains that have been added to each one of our tenants right here. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, like and subscribe and hit that bell if you wanna be notified next time I upload a video. Thanks again.